Let's look at this company, Uber. It's a transportation company that basically helps to coordinate the transportation sector. Now, there are customers and there are drivers and there are, there are cars which can be used as, think about them as taxis, and there are roads, but Uber not necessarily owns any of, of that. What it owns is information, it, connects info, it collects information about them and it creates a communication network between them and then it creates what we will get to know as a digital twin. So basically it has a digital copy of you, if you ever use that service, same as the other digital companies in Silicon Valley have a little digital copy of you, a digital twin. Um, it knows your behavioral patterns, your desires and so forth. And the same of, let's say, the driver, the transportation, the taxi driver, and the same of the roads, which it not necessarily owns, or the taxis itself, which it not necessarily owns. And what it does then with that is, well, it creates a knowledge platform with all based on all these copies of these digital copies only data, just the data. And based on that, it does two things, machine learning, machine learning works often with empirical data, and it does computer simulations, which it does. Think about it. It's kind of like playing a video game, a video computer simulation. Think about it as playing, I don't know if you know SimCity or what kind of like planning game, reality game you like to, to play. And you know, you, you simulate things that not necessarily happen in reality, but then you use machine learning again, you try to optimize things and then you communicate downward again. And then you communicate your insights that you gain, your knowledge that you gain. Uh, downward again, and that is extremely valuable. So what's the value where this company lives is actually up here, and that doesn't work only for that company. That works also for, for other companies. So for example, yes, uh, there's you can do the same thing with music without actually owning uh, any music, or with news without actually owning any news, or with movies without necessarily owning movies. Now you can, if there's no competition, and you know really what people want, you can start to produce your own content, if nobody's up for the task of really providing what people want, and you can start to produce your own songs, but not, the original idea was actually not that. All these companies didn't really produce anything, or here's a company which is, has more, like it doesn't have one hotel bed, but it has more beds than all the other hotels, I don't know, the Sheraton and the Hinton and all of them, uh, Hilton and all of them combined, right? The Holiday Inn and so forth without actually owning a hotel. But so what does this company Airbnb and, and all of them actually own? Well, it owns information, data and knowledge of, well, the, call it the, the overnight sleeping hotel business or whatever whatever it is. It just coordinates that it owns here. It owns this platform of knowledge where it does its machine learning, its computer simulation. And of course, this one here kicked all the other retailers out of the, without necessarily, I mean, again, if you don't have any competition, you might start to produce your own goods, like your own batteries and stuff, but not necessarily. You don't need to produce the books. You don't need to, it was, this Amazon was a book retailer at the beginning. It didn't own the books. It had Jeff Bezos had the knowledge of the book retail market. And with that, you know, killed all the competition. And that's what it is now, by far the world's biggest retailer. And, uh, but this is also like, I, I work with more traditional companies too. For example, the last few years, I, I had the honor of working with a mining company. Mining companies, I mean, they are literally from the stone age. And you know, we humankind are very addicted to some of these natural resources that are extracted. So digital technology can really help us as well to make this a lot more efficient and a lot more environmentally friendly. So also these companies, it still creates value to own land and it still creates value to own a bed and to compose a song and it creates value to drive a car. But what the digital paradigm is about is the knowledge and the information that is created. And you can then, first of all, we call it digitalization. We digitalize information and data and communi communicate it upwards. And then we have algorithmification, 
which is then the knowledge that we produced up here that we then communicate down, let's say, to the to the physical world. And, and, and both of them create value. And that basically, that was the previous paradigm, which is still ongoing. And many companies, many governments, many NGOs are still struggling with that, many social systems. And this is then the most advanced one. Go to that stage where, where we then, and we will talk a lot about uh, algorithmification in this course. 